Tick tock on the clock, but the party don't stop. No, oh, 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 oh. I'm just a good singer. I hope you guys are comfy because I'm about to spill some tea. Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Kayla, and welcome to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing a story time video for you guys because your girl definitely has quite a story. Um, So this story that I'm about to tell you guys happened to me literally two days ago. So all of the events are still very, very fresh in my mind. And this story time is all about why I had to go to the hospital two times in one day and why I went and what happened and why this day was also one of the most embarrassing days of my whole entire life. Make sure you're comfy, go grab a snack, go grab a drink because we are about to get straight into this video and I have a lot to say. Okay, so I'm trying to think of where I should even start with telling the story because there's just so much to it. Um, all right, I guess I'll start here. So about two weeks ago, I went to the dentist and I actually have a vlog up on my channel about this dentist appointment, okay? But I'm just going to kind of give you a brief summary of why I even went to the dentist in the first place. So pretty much I made the appointment because I had noticed that I had this tender bump underneath my lip, like inside my gum, um, above my front tooth. It was like right here, okay? Um, I noticed it because I remember one morning I was putting on makeup and I was putting concealer like under my nose and I was like, oh my gosh, what is that? I just thought it was kind of strange. Um, and I wanted to make sure that everything was all good. So I made this appointment to go to the dentist. I got there and the dentist took some x-rays. He pretty much told me that this tooth right here had become infected and then a cyst had formed because when I was nine years old, I had a bicycle accident and I chipped my two front teeth. Um, and so these two teeth right here are veneers. Anyway, um, apparently trauma like that that happens in the past can cause issues to come up in the future. So with this issue that I was having, he pretty much told me that I had to be referred to an oral surgeon and I had to, you know, get the cyst removed. And also I had to get a root canal to prevent further like infection and other issues from popping up in the future with this tooth. If you didn't know this about me already, um, if you're new to my channel, I have the biggest fear of needles and surgery and blood and I can't handle it. Like I have passed out on several occasions just from people talking about you know, things like that. So anyways, I was pretty fearful about having to make this appointment to get this whole tooth situation figured out, but I did it, you know, I got in touch with a really good oral surgeon and I had set up a consultation. Anyways, so after I had that appointment, um, I wasn't too concerned with, you know, the little bump. I was just like, all right, it's not painful. It's kind of annoying that it's there, but I'm gonna just try to ignore it and live my life and not think about it. <laughs> so anyway, then a few days after Christmas, um, it was just, you know, a normal day. I was doing my normal stuff, getting some work done, and I had noticed that the bump was starting to get a little bigger, a little bit more tender, maybe even a little bit painful, and I just knew that it was growing. Um, and it had me kind of concerned, you know, um, because I remember looking in the mirror and my smile was like really crooked and it was just strange to see, you know, and I was starting to get worried because, you know, um, the infection was starting to spread further up my face. Like it started right here, but I could feel it getting higher. And not only was it getting higher at my face, but it was getting lower too because my lip was swollen. So pretty much it was just expanding everywhere. Um, the best way I could describe it is like, it felt like a grape was like inside of my gum, just like sitting there. And so um, not only was it getting more swollen, but I had also noticed that, you know, I was super duper dizzy. And um, I remember I was actually at Target doing some after Christmas, Christmas shopping for some people. And I remember just feeling like I was going to pass out and I was thinking, oh no, I'm getting the stomach flu because, you know, so many people this year had the stomach flu on Christmas. So I was thinking I was starting to show signs of getting sick like that. Um, and so, yeah, it was just really weird though. I drove home though and, and not only was I still dizzy, but also my hearing was kind of off. Even my vision was blurry. And so of course I then had to go online and I actually looked up what are the signs of 
a tooth infection spreading and literally every single symptom that I read was what I was experiencing. I know you're never supposed to look up your symptoms online because it can tell you the worst of the worst, but I just didn't know what was going on. So I told my mom what was going on and she was pretty much like, okay, well, you know, it's really late right now. Maybe you're just like overthinking things because you know, it was literally like 11.30 and I was like coming up with all these conclusions and I think she might have thought that, you know, I was just getting myself worked up. So um, I took some ibuprofen and um, she pretty much told me that she would try to get me an earlier appointment to see the oral surgeon because I told her, you know, it was painful and I... I don't know, it was just making me feel uneasy. So she told me she would do that in the morning and so I tried to go to bed. Of course, I was like afraid to go to sleep because I'm like, oh my God, I'm gonna die. Like, I was really, really freaking myself out. So the next morning, I remember, oh my gosh, my mouth went from feeling like slightly painful and tender to like this throbbing pain where like, it felt like my mouth was pulsating and it was just so painful um and my entire lip was swollen like it looked like i had gotten punched in the face and i just felt awful like my balance was still off and the infection had spread even more overnight um it was so bad that like i couldn't smile if somebody said something to make me laugh i would tell them to stop because anytime i would smile it would just it felt like it would spread more and it would be this sharp shooting pain and oh my gosh it was terrible so i got out of bed as soon as i noticed all this and i said to my mom i have to get this taken care of today i said i cannot wait any longer i am in just an excruciating amount of pain and i said i need to get somewhere today like right now and um, like I had mentioned, I hate, 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 hate anything medical, any type of doctor or hospital or anything. I hate it, hate it, hate it. So for me to say this, for me to bring this up, um, obviously, you know, I was really, really uncomfortable. So I told her and she was doing her best to help me find a place to go to, but it was really hard because this was all happening on a Sunday and on Sundays, like everything is closed. So, anyway, um, there weren't any dentists open at all, like nowhere. We were looking everywhere. Um, and so the only option was for me to go to the ER. And um, so I was really, really, really nervous about this. And um, yeah, I was not looking forward to it, but at the same time, I was just desperate for some relief. So we ended up going to this little hospital and this was at like 10.30 in the morning. It was really early. Well early to be going to the ER. I mean, anytime you go to the ER, it's not a good time. But yeah, just like what a way to start your day, you know? <laughs> Drinking my morning coffee and going to the ER. Actually, that morning I didn't have my morning coffee. I didn't drink or eat anything because my mouth was so swollen and painful. So food was not at the top of my priority list that day. Anyway, so we got in the car, we went to this hospital, and um, I had no idea what to expect. We get into this hospital, we go through the metal detector, we get the hospital bracelets. We really didn't have to wait that long. A couple minutes later, a nurse comes for us, and you know, we go back to the room, she asks all the questions that everybody hates answering, and um, then I remember she took my blood pressure, and even the blood pressure guys just like, I remember the titer got like I felt my arm pulsating and it was literally making me dizzy like I felt like I was just going to pass out because I just don't I didn't like it you know it just freaks me out so I remember like as she was doing that she was asking me questions like I remember she asked like okay like what's your level of pain and I couldn't even think straight and she finally took it off and I was like thank god she left and then we were waiting for like the main doctor to come see us and I remember just sitting there like being so afraid not knowing what was going to come next so anyway the doctor comes back and you know I told him all of my symptoms and he looked at my mouth he pretty much just said that the only thing he could really do was put me on you know an antibiotic and a pain reliever and he told me that you know I needed to go to the oral surgeon by the end of the week so anyways after that me and my mom headed back home and we stopped and got a smoothie on the way because I hadn't eaten anything and the only thing I felt like I really could eat was a smoothie because anything else just seemed like too much because of the amount of pain I was in. 
So, um, yeah, I drank the smoothie, I took my medicine, and um, another fun fact about me is that I am super weird about taking super strong, like, painkillers or really any type of medication because I'm weird about side effects. And also, I don't like feeling tired or loopy or anything. It just freaks me out. So I was really hesitant to take this medicine, but I took it because I had to. I didn't want this to get any worse. Um, so I remember getting home and all I wanted to do was just lay on the couch. Like I had so much work to do, but I couldn't get myself to do it. I just felt like exhausted. I felt like I got hit by a bus. Um, and then also I remember feeling very, very nauseous. And not only that, but um, as the time started to pass by that night, I remember just feeling like the infection was getting worse and worse, even though, you know, I had taken the antibiotic and they told us that that would start to kick in like that day. So I was like, why is this spreading and getting more painful? Um, yeah, so the pain meds were doing absolutely nothing for me um, and neither was the antibiotic and I was feeling nauseous and dizzy. But then I remember I had like 10 minutes where I didn't feel super terrible, like I don't know if I was just distracted or what, but I had like 10 minutes where I kind of felt okay. And so with that 10 minutes, I remember running upstairs and like getting lip cessed orders ready even though I felt like death. Like I remember like putting lip balms in a package, laying down on my floor, getting up again, putting in my paper worms, putting stickers on, then laying on my floor. and like. I wanted so badly to be able to be productive and get stuff done, but I was just like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. I felt even more nauseous, and so I laid back down on the couch, and I remember it was probably like 10.30 at night, and I said to my mom, like, I feel like I'm going to throw up. I said, something just isn't right. I said, I feel like I'm getting worse, not better. These pain meds are doing nothing, and I was taking them regularly, you know? Um, and so she was like, well, do you want to go back to the ER? And I was like, well, of course not. Like who wants to go to the ER? But at the same time, guys, I was just in so much pain. I was so uncomfortable. And then another thing that was really scary was that I was unable to say my S's. Like as the day went on, I remember trying, trying to talk and I couldn't say my S's. It was like impossible. So talking was painful, smiling was painful, eating was painful, everything was so painful. And so I just couldn't take it anymore. And I pretty much agreed to go back to the ER. And like I said, for me to agree to that is like, it's rare. I threw on my shoes and we got in the car and we went to the ER. Also, I thought I'd add in that this hospital we went to was actually a different one from the one we went to earlier in the day. This one was a bigger one. So anyway, we get to the hospital. We're about to go into the ER. I remember just sitting in the car and I was shivering, not because I was cold, but like when I get super duper nervous, that's just like something that happens. Like, you know, when your teeth are like, I can't do it. But, um, yeah, like it's like when you're cold, when you're shivering. And I was telling my mom, I am so nervous. Like I'm just looking at this place and I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't want to do this. I don't want to do this. And my mom was like, you're going to be fine. Like you can always leave if you want to leave. But yet at the same time on our way to the hospital, my mom was like, now Kayla, you have to be open-minded because you know, if they want to do a certain test or if they want to do this or that, you have to let them because if you don't, then like you're never gonna get better. And so just that alone was freaking me out because I'm thinking, oh my gosh, like I don't want them to like poke me or ah, I was just really, really scared. So anyway, I scrounged up some courage and I walked through those doors and then we like signed in. So we were just sitting in those chairs by the check-in area and um, we were waiting for the nurse. And as I was sitting there, I remember just like sitting and thinking a lot. Like I was doing a lot of thinking about just like, oh my gosh, what are they going to do to me? What are they going to say? Like, what's it going to be like? I just didn't know because I'm never at the ER. And so whew, I will never forget this. Are you guys ready for the most embarrassing part of the story? All right, so we're sitting in the chairs and I remember feeling really hot. Like I got this major hot flash. So I remember taking off my jacket and giving it to my mom. And I was like, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. And she was like, I don't remember what she said. I think, I can't remember because I was starting to like zone out at this point. I said, I feel like I'm gonna throw up. 
And again, I don't remember what she said, but then I remember saying, no, really, I feel like I'm going to pass out. And I remember after I said that, right as I said, I feel like I'm going to pass out, the doors to the emergency room open. You know how the doors just like open automatically? They opened up and as soon as they opened up and the nurse came by, I passed out, completely passed out. Like I was down instantly. And I, I don't remember too much of what happened directly after I passed out because I was passed out. What I do remember though is I remember going down and then kind of sitting up and coughing because I felt like I was going to throw up. And then I threw up. This is probably disgusting in TMI, but I remember there was like a nurse that had like this tiniest little vomit bag. Like it was so small. I remember seeing it out of the corner of my eye, but I had no control over my limbs or anything. And so if she really thought I was going to make it in there, then no, that was just not going to happen. But I remember that happening. And then I remember feeling my mom's cold little bony hand, like doing something with my hair. And I remember thinking, why is she fixing my hair right now? Like, What's going on? I found out later she was actually getting vomit out of my hair. It's disgusting and embarrassing Ugh, on every level. And I remember hearing, I could barely hear or see anything, but I remember kind of hearing somebody say, oh, like you should probably sit up so we can take you to a room. And I remember like trying, but I just couldn't because obviously I just passed out. So I don't know what that nurse was thinking. But anyways, I guess doctors kind of came over and like helped me up and they put me in a wheelchair. Oh my gosh, this is so embarrassing. <laughs> okay, they put me in a wheelchair and I guess they wheeled me back to a room. Um, I remember going really fast, like I couldn't hear anything or see anything. If you've never passed out before, it literally feels like you're underwater, like you can't hear anything, you can't see anything, you have no control of your body. And I remember just thinking, oh my gosh, I'm dying. Oh my gosh, I'm dying. I thought I was dying. But obviously I'm still here. Anyway, so we get to the room and they lay me down on the bed. And I remember kind of starting to wake up after that. Like once I was in the bed, my vision started to kind of come back slowly but surely. And then I remember they gave me like a grape tablet to put under my tongue because I threw up and got sick. And I guess it was like an anti-nausea thing. I don't know. Um, and the nurse took my blood pressure and I was like, oh my gosh, not again. And I'm like, I don't want to pass out again. That makes me feel so sick. And so anyway, I feel like I was kind of like half awake and half not though when she was doing that. So I was like kind of okay with it. Um, and then I don't even remember if they did anything else after that. I know they took my blood pressure. They might have taken my temp. And so after that, I was just so relieved to like be alive, you know, because I thought I was dying. Um, and so the two nurses left. And then we were waiting for like the main doctor. We were in there for probably like an hour waiting and then he came back and girl, this guy was fine. He was so attractive. And I'm like, of course I would get an attractive male doctor right now when I literally look like I just got hit by a bus. So anyway, I remember him looking at my mouth, asking a couple questions. And he pretty much said that there was really nothing that they could do like to my mouth but he said that they could put me on a stronger painkiller to get me through the night. And then he said that I should, you know, see an oral surgeon sometime within the next like couple days, like as soon as possible. But I remember feeling really like upset because I'm thinking, okay, nobody can do anything for me. Like nobody can get rid of this thing. All I wanted was for somebody to just like cut it out, you know, cause it was so uncomfortable. He couldn't really do much either. And he looked at it and he said, yeah, usually sometimes we could pop these but it doesn't look like it could be popped. So I was like, okay, great. So my mom and I went home and at this point, like, yes, I was in so much pain, but um, I was more relieved to just like be alive. I remember going home and I was like a zombie at this point. I was washing my face and okay, this might be like way too TMI, but I have to share it with you because it concludes the story. So I was washing my face and I remember, this is so gross, but I remember washing my face like right over the area that was really painful and I felt something in my mouth and I looked and the infection, like the infected cyst that was in my mouth literally burst. And I know it's disgusting and people are gonna be like, oh my God, you're gross, but it's what happened. Like it burst and I felt like I was dreaming. Like I was like, wait, are you serious? Because 
oh my gosh guys it was the most painful thing ever like i said i would compare it to like if there were a full-sized grape like wedged in your gum and it went from like here to here imagine that like something that big so when that happened i was just like hallelujah i felt like a new person i mean i still kind of felt sick and gross because of like everything that happened that night like i wasn't like completely feeling better but i definitely felt a lot of relief and so i remember um my lip being kind of swollen before i went to bed but i think that was just because of like you know all the stuff that happened and um i remember i went to bed and um i woke up the next day and i just felt so much better you know like i didn't feel anything swollen like by my sinuses anymore like it was just like whew, breath of fresh air um my lips were still kind of swollen but that literally went down within like an hour i put some ice on it um i took my antibiotic and it was just like nothing had ever happened and i was just like oh my gosh this is crazy i was just i was so thankful i thanked god about a million times that day to just like be alive and to be happy and to feel normal again and so then i just went on about my day that very next day i went to my little holiday work party and that was like in the morning too so i recovered fast so i went to that then i got to see my cousins that came in from out of town and i was so worried that i wouldn't be able to see them just because of like everything that was going on i thought i wouldn't be able to see them at all when they were in but i did and it was just like Oh my gosh, it was amazing. But it was definitely an experience. Something I will never forget, unfortunately. One more thing. If you have any crazy story times similar to what I just talked about, make sure you let me know in the comment section below. As long as it's not too gruesome because your yeah, girl can't handle that. But I love you guys and I will talk to you soon. Bye. Mwah. Just got my nails did.